Okay, I'm going to introduce the experiment. It's the acceleration experiment uh, to prove that the formula F equals MA is true. There's several bits of equipment you need. You need a, a nice, smooth rolling uh, dynamics troy, some string, a pulley, a set of very small masses, so a 10 gram hanger with uh, maybe four more 10 gram um, masses, slotted masses to go with it. You need uh, a smooth inclined plane to roll the trolley down. Uh, you need to have something to to uh, incline the plane with, so some wedges, I used 100 gram weights here. Okay. So the equipment you need, including a timer, right? So now you've got all the equipment you need, what do you do with it? Number one, you want to try and set up a setup where the trolley moves as though it's moving without friction. Now, if I try and roll the trolley, you can see it comes to rest because of friction. If I stack up one end of this thing, so make it a little bit higher, and now try rolling it, so it's going to be going down the slope a little bit, it should be able to roll a bit easier, but it's still coming to rest. Add two more, about maybe a, a, a two centimetre block at the end here basically, and now having tried this previously, I know that it should pretty much roll without spinning up or slowing down or as close to as I think I'm going to get, okay? So, not completely, but pretty much eliminated friction, okay? So, this is an error in my experiment I would like to do more to get rid of. Now I'm going to use a piece of string to attach to the pulley. And what we have to think about here is, we're using a mass hanging off the end of here, which is being pulled by gravity, and gravity is accelerating the mass that's hanging off the end as well as all this mass, right, and any of the other masses I want to use. So, I want to get all the stuff that's being accelerated, including the hanger, and think that this is all the stuff that's being accelerated. This is all the mass that's being accelerated. I'm going to attach these additional weights for the next part of the experiment to the trolley, okay, so, so that I can keep the mass constant in my experiment. This is one of the things I want to try and control, one of the control variables. Okay? So I've got four masses attached there, which I'll be using at a later point of the experiment. Okay, I've got my hanger here. Alright. This hanger here. Just going to keep this in position for a second. Now I'm just going to change the angle so we can see more clearly what's going on here. Okay, so the hanger is going to fall, this is basically a 10 gram mass, which is going to be pulled by gravity downwards. It's going to fall a set distance. Right? It's only when it's falling, when it's being pulled by gravity downwards, right, is the trolley going to be accelerating. After this has hit the ground, the trolley just continues rolling under its own inertia. So I need to, this is the distance that I'm measuring, okay? And the distance from the ground to the top of this hanger is seven, 73 centimeters, or 0.73 meters, okay? So I'll just show you, I'll just show you that falling now. Okay, now I would have started the timing as soon as the trolley started moving, got my time reading, and, um, and then I would repeat it three times to get an average, okay? So that is for a force that was generated by this 10 gram mass falling that I have to multiply by gravity. Okay, now I'm just gonna look at a slightly different position. Okay, so I'm about to release the trolley and take my first timing uh, measurement, okay? So I'm gonna start the timer as soon as the trolley's released and I will stop it as soon as the mass hits the ground, okay? So I got a time there of 4.25 seconds, okay? So that trolley did that distance in 4.25 seconds. I would repeat this three or four times um, and try and eliminate any erroneous results or anything that looks anomalous and take the average, okay? Now the next step is, is that when you add the next mass, it's really important that that additional mass comes from the trolley because the force that's pulling this system is, is gravity and the gravity is accelerating the mass that's hanging off the end as well as the mass here. 
So all the mass is being accelerated. So again, to keep the mass constant, I'll take one of the masses I put on here previously, add it to the hanger, and try doing an experiment. Okay, so let me just get this back in position and get, reset my timer. Okay, so I try to get the hanger to exactly the same position it was the first time, so it's going to go exactly the same distance. I might make a mark here, actually, that would be helpful. Start the timer, and I'm going to stop it as soon as it hits the ground. Okay? This time 2.89. So with double the force, we've definitely reduced the amount of time it took to cover this distance. We have to go ahead and calculate the acceleration. I'll do one more so that we get, so I've got a couple of readings to look at. Basically, I've got my hanger back into position. Just use this pen to stop the trolley moving. Taking another mass off the trolley, adding it to the hanger. Okay, whoops. Get the trolley, let's get the hanger to the correct height. Okay, so previous time was 2.89. Let's do the next one. Right, so again, start the timer as soon as it starts moving. Stop the timer when the mass hits the ground. Okay, and that was 2.17, so again, a shorter period of time. Right, so now I've got my results. I can go ahead and analyze them on a graph of force against acceleration. Mass is force against acceleration. The gradient should be the mass, which should be the mass of this and all the other masses we used to do the accelerating. Okay, I hope you helpful. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. Uh, I got three times. I didn't do the experiments three times, and I haven't taken an average or removed any anomalous results. But just with these rough set of results, I was able to calculate the accelerations using the formula 2d divided by t squared. So I took the time, doubled, sorry, I took the um, distance, doubled it, and I uh, divided by the square of the time. Uh, this calculates acceleration. If you want to know how to do that or why this formula is true, there's another video in the uh, pack. I've plotted force against acceleration. Normally you would put the um, thing you were measuring, which was essentially the acceleration, on the y-axis. But because the hypothesis is saying that force should be proportional to acceleration and that the gradient would be equal to the mass, I've decided to do it this way around. Um, the gradient is supposed to be the mass, and I measured the mass of the trolley and the weights to be about 0.95 kilograms and this time around I'm getting the gradient to be 0.863, so relatively close. Obviously there were some areas, errors in the experiment uh, that could have been improved upon. It's not come out directly proportional, there is a y-intercept, and that's probably because of frictional forces, um, but otherwise a satisfactory result, and definitely some things we could Im improve on, maybe reducing the friction, um, maybe uh, doing a larger range of results, taking averages, and seeing if we can get this number as close to this number as possible, which would therefore prove the hypothesis that um, force is proportional to acceleration if mass remains constant. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.